Okay, we have been talking for some time about organization of speech sounds in natural <laughs> languages and we have claimed that many variations, many variations, you know, sound taking one form in one context, the same sound appearing as another variant in another context, etcetera, has a pattern. They are predictable. Now, if that claim is right, if they are really predictable, if we can say A will look like B when it comes before C, then we should be able to write machine readable rules. Then we should be able to write algorithms that will predict that A becomes B when it comes before C or A becomes X when it comes before Y as in other aspects of nature. How is that rule written in phonology, in linguistics generally and in phonology in particular? So, today we will look at some conventions. These are not God given truths. These are man made conventions. Okay? Just as you have many other social conventions. In some countries, you greet the elders with your hands folded before you. In some other countries, they greet the elders by bending low. In some other countries, when they see a stranger, they stand straight, maybe bend backwards, but they give their hand and shake. You know, they, there are variations. Similarly, in sciences, there are conventions of rule writing. In today's session, we will look at convention of rule writing in phonology. How do we write rules to predict variations in speech sound? Right. Basically, this is the skeleton of any rule. You know, what you see on the screen is the skeleton of any rule in phonology. You have a phenomenon you have change in the phenomenon and you have context of the phenomenon. So, for example, you can say uh, x changes to y or as I said a changes to b, you know 1 changes to 2, choose what you like x changes to y. So, you know you have a phenomenon, phenomenon is x, you have a variant, variant here is y, okay. x takes the form of y. When does it do that? Either, you know, I mean these are all imaginary. Either it when it comes before, either when it comes after A or it comes before B. You can also say either it when it comes before A, after B. In other words, you have to have for rule writing, you have to have these three things. components of a rule what are the essential components of a rule when you write number 1 it's a phenomenon in this case you can call it sound it's a particular sound okay which sound are you talking about or which feature are you talking about? Okay. Then it has a variant. That is, that is another sound or another feature, a variation, you know. This changes into that. So, you need this and you need that. Okay. And then third is pretty simple, you need context. Now, context requires descriptors, you describe the context. What can be the context? Something comes before, something comes after, something comes in middle. So, a context can have descriptors. Those elements 
that describe the context. So, the context can be at the beginning of the word. Suppose, in, in linguistics, we use this, what do you call it? We call it double cross <laughs> or word boundary. This indicates if you write it this way, then this is the beginning of a word. But if you write it this way, then this is the end of a word. So, you know, they, so you either something comes at the head of a word, either something comes. So, you know, you can have A, you can have B. Here, let us say the phenomenon is X, the variant is Y and the descriptors can be either A or B or between A and B. Okay. In other words, a rule can be written so long as you know what changes to what and where. This is what changes to what and where. Linguistic theory so far has not made much attempt. There have been some feeble attempts, some half-hearted attempts to describe why, but so far, you know, there is not a consistent body of literature and knowledge that says why x changes into y, why a changes into b. But we have reasonably good amount of knowledge and literature on what changes to what and where. So, a rule necessarily has these three components. Can you close your eyes and listen to me and then repeat? Number one, what changes to what it changes variant and then where it changes context. What does it take to write a rule? Can you close your eyes and tell me? What changes to what it changes and where it changes? To describe where you need a minimum of two things, between what or before and after what. You can say either after A or after before B or between A and B. Okay? Let us look at some examples. So, you know there are speech variants x and y, there are contexts after a, before b, between a and b or and there are descriptors a, b or a and b. Simple, let us apply. Look at these data, some words from English and look at how r behaves, the sound r behaves in English words. I will give you full two minutes, please look at all the words and just try and note mentally first, then maybe on your notebook. Do you see any peculiarity in the behavior of R in these words in this language? Am I clear to you, please? Yes or no? Yes, Everybody, please, yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. I am asking you to look at R, look at the behavior of R in these words. And if you note any peculiarity, please make a mental note or write it on your notebook. And then the third thing will be, do you see any pattern? Do you see where it behaves in a particular, in a peculiar manner? Okay? Right. You would like these three, two rows to come here, right? Or is it okay? Okay, please. Take, take a couple of minutes. Look at the variations. This is an exercise in you know observation. A good scientist must be a very good observer. Are you able to see from here? You can discuss among yourselves. 
if you like. You can talk to each other, but you will be able to talk to each other better if you observe it silently first. That is where your training as a scientist comes. People will like you to sit there, but today be here permanent, does not matter. The next day, if you come late, quietly bring them with you. Are you able to see any pattern? Are you able to see any pattern? Speaking is by heavy syllable, then we will not see. Yeah, right. There is something else. Look at them. Look at what comes after. Bread. Bread. Are you able to see any pattern? Yes. What happens when it comes before vowel and after vowel? The whole consonant. Are you able to see any pattern? No. The consonant doesn't matter. Look at it. More carefully. Okay, uh, a good way to do so is. Okay, let me come before the camera. Okay, uh, a good way to observe. Now I am talking of, you know, I'm I'm, I'm just trying. To, I'm I'm going a little beyond, strictly speaking, in linguistics, and I'm trying to. Uh, advise you into observation, you know how you observe. It, it, it may not be a bad idea for you to make two or three columns on your notebook. Okay? And if you find there are two or three different kinds of behavior of these words, a particular sound in these words, then make those two or three sets. Say how does r behave when it comes before a consonant? How does it behave when it comes at the end of a word? How does it behave when it comes before a vowel? Okay? Look at it that way and you might perhaps notice patterns. Okay, you may look at, you may look at these patterns. R before consonants, sorry, R, not R, I am very sorry, R before consonants, R at the end of the word and R before a vowel. Do you see any pattern? Just observe. I am trying to help you give, I am trying to give you some guidance. Okay? But later you can have more and more complicated data and you should be able to look at the context. You know, half the research lies in finding patterns in your data, no matter what you are researching. It might be the behavior of molecules, it might be the behavior of a variant speech sound, 
you know observation is required and acute accurate. If any one of you finds a pattern, please raise your hand. You have found a pattern. Yes. Then you have some pattern. Right. What pattern do you find when Ra comes uh, af sorry, after or before? Okay. What pattern do you find when Ra comes before a consonant? Can you speak up? Can you please capture my friend on the camera? Uh, can she speak while sitting or would you like her to stand up? Stand up? Can you please stand up? Uh, the sound is not pronounced. Yeah, the sound is lost. When R comes before a consonant, R is lost. Do you do you notice any pattern here? Please sit down. Anybody else? Mahesh, you do you notice any pattern here? At the end, uh, sorry, at the end of a word, ra at the end of a word. We don't pronounce the sound. We don't pronounce. Ra is deleted not only before a consonant, it is deleted also at the end of a word, before silence in this variety of English. Okay. What happens when Ra comes before a vowel? Can you please speak to the camera? Can you please speak to the camera? What happens when Ra comes before a vowel? Please, we are, we are losing pressure second. You know how much every second here costs? Pronounced Ra is pronounced, obviously. Say it again, Mahesh, tell the camera. <laughs> Ra is pronounced. You speak, you know. It looks like you are very sorry saying, stating God's truth. Ra is pronounced when it comes before vowel. You can classify your data, you know. You can say Ra is deleted at the end of the following words in a standard British English, you know, look at the data. Can you try and write a rule without looking at what I have written? Write it in words or maybe, you know, I have already written, so you can copy it. This is how you predict, you know, R is deleted you know that sign indicates 0, null. Actually, this is also a symbol for a particular kind of speech sound. Uh, I will I'll change it later. Okay. It should be uh, this symbol, the null symbol. Can you please, can I take about a couple of seconds of your time? Null symbol is not written this way. Null symbol is written this way. this is null. That is not straight, about 45 degrees angle and that sort of thing. Okay. Right. So, you know what you write is, what changes, that is raw changes, to what? Null. It is deleted, it becomes 0. Okay. Where? When it comes at the end of the word, when it is the last sound of the word, when it comes before silence at the word boundary. Okay. This is the convention of rule writing. Can you attempt writing a rule? Can you attempt writing a rule for this following the same convention? Following the same convention, can you please try write a rule saying R is deleted before a consonant? Please write. I would like to check your notebooks. Okay. You saw in, the, uh, in some words, you saw here that r is deleted also before a consonant. Write a rule, just as you have written this rule, r is deleted at the end of the word. Similarly, please write r is deleted before a consonant in this variety of English.
would one of you please like to come to the board and write it here for all of us? Okay, take the chalk piece, write the rule here to describe this phenomenon. The chalk piece is there. Yeah, just write large hands. Right there. Yeah, yes. And write the rule to predict this, just as we have written here. Similarly, yes, simple. Great, yes, that is it. Shall we clap for our friend, please? Okay. You can convert this rule into more sensible something, into a, into a tree diagram. Okay. Ra goes to 0 before a word, sorry, at the word boundary. You see there is onset, there is rhyme, and in the beginning, you know, you have take a word like far, you have ra at the end, but in this variety, if that is the last sound of the word, okay, then ra is deleted. Rhyme was earlier branching. If you look at the left hand derivation, you see rhyme is branching, but if you look at the right hand derivation, you find rhyme is no longer branching. It becomes, it loses a node. If what, what does it lose? It loses the coda. You can see the branching rhyme had both nucleus and coda, but now this rhyme has only nucleus. Okay? You are able to state the entire change and the reason also for change much more succinctly rather than say x goes to y. Okay? Let us look at some, uh, this rule. Okay? Can you convert this, you see here, here are the data. You know, you have words like barter, where ra is deleted before ta, you have cart, where ra is deleted before ta, you have dart, you have hard, you have jerk, you have large, you have market, you have nearly, okay? Sorry, this nearly is wrong because it comes at the, or maybe you can keep it, leave it as it is. Can you? Can you, you know, the rule has been formulated. Can you convert this rule into tree theoretic rule, into the tree diagram, onset rhyme, what is lost, what stays? Can you try and do that? Just see, here you know, earlier rule, r is deleted at the end of the word. Just observe, copy this rule maybe on your notebook. Then you will be able to, I am sorry I have used broken arrows. I do, did not know how to use mathematical derivation. So, I have used word files. You can have a straight lines and when it branches, you can have it accordingly. Just copy it. Both left hand and right hand column left hand is input, right hand is output. The example on the left hand is your input, that is ra being the last sound of the word, output, it is deleted because it is the last sound of the word. Okay? Now, if you have copied it, then you understand the convention. Now, write this rule, write this rule using tree diagram. Can you do that? Write this rule using tree diagram. Do you understand the task, please? Okay. You, I'm, I'm asking you to write a rule to predict that C is sorry, R is deleted before a C, before a consonant in a standard British English. Here are your data. At the end semester examination, I might give you some data from a, an unknown language and might ask you to write rule predicting these variations. So, please do learn it.
finished? Come, let us try. Can you take the duster, clean this portion or maybe you can use this side if you like, so there itself. Okay. Can you write bigger hand and deeper so that you know the camera otherwise you know a lot of people not here are also going to look at it. Yeah. Yes, actually just wait a minute, you will be able to show it better if you make, if you, if you have branch here as well, you can have branch here as well, this is the, this is the, here you have only one node, great, shall we clap for you please, okay. See many of these things can be done very mechanically, your computer can generate, give them the words, ask them the question, write rules for these words and you will see they produce very neat across the board algorithms. But the catch is you will be able to get these neat algorithms only if you are able to observe well. So the key to research in sciences is good observation, very penetrating, very uh, you know accurate missing no variation at all, so that you can uh, write a correct rule. The same thing you know, you can see that the tree on the left hand has branches even in the coda, okay. but tree on the right hand which is the output has no branch in the coda, it is only one single node and you are able to capture the fact that in, in this variety of language in this variety of English, R is deleted when it occurs before a consonant. Actually, you need not have two rules, you need not have two rules saying before this, before this. You, you see, you have at the moment you have rule 1, you have rule 2. Can anybody here try and write both the rules in one go? Can anybody here please try and write both the rules in one go, in one algorithm? You can say in words, computer please, please uh, delete ra whenever you see it coming before uh, silence or before a consonant, whenever you see it coming at the end of the word or coming before a consonant. How can we write it in an algorithm? Would you like to try? I will give you 60 seconds, please try, think, it requires, it is an exercise in thinking. It is absolutely simple, you know, if, if you think hard, you, you will know. You can, you need, you do not really need two rules, you can state that in one rule. Okay. How would you do that? Yeah. Yeah, right. How would you write it in this form? <laughs> write it in this form. Write it in, an, in the form of an algorithm. Finished?
done okay one convention is to save time you know i am going ahead one convention is put a brace and just add here so you have consonant and you have word boundary it applies to both here again you can you can you can do the same thing that you know a branching coda becomes unbranching because it either comes before silence or it comes before another consonant okay these things are pretty simple you know this is a matter of writing convention you can do it in many ways but the point here is come back to the point rule writing in phonology is nothing but making predictions on the basis of please note patterns that you observe rule is nothing but a pattern that you have observed on the basis of some data okay okay look at these two words these two phrases i expect you to write a rule on your own now okay in these two phrases law and order india and pakistan an extra r comes between law and can you see the extra r here can you see in the standard varieties of english in the uk you know this is typically this is peculiarly british but the point here for us is whether british or indian whether american or nigerian language phonological context phonological variations are often predictable phonological variations are most of the time predictable we can write rules and we can say this is how would it would go can you write a rule predicting this intrusion you see law and order india and pakistan you can see here how does it get in can you write a rule on your notebook you can write it in this manner first and if necessary i will ask you to convert it in this manner later okay who would like to go to the board and write can you come please pick up a chalk piece use the right side of the board that part but write bigger hand you know and neat yes that's it pretty simple you know like r can go to zero so zero can also go to r can we convert it into tree diagram can we convert it into tree diagram please okay can we convert this rule into tree diagram try not difficult at all don't look at my derivation until you have done yours but if you get stuck i have left it there you see make your own quota of mistake make your share of mistake if you wish to learn okay if you really wish to learn then make your share of mistake do you remember anyone who learnt riding a bicycle without falling i know one person but uh, she doesn't ride bicycle any longer okay so i'm i'm leaving the screen on but don't look at it until you have derived your own
And once you have written, compare your own derivation with the one given there. Okay? Okay, any questions? Try and draw, you know, similar diagrams for examples from your own language. Shall we move on? Is it okay? Any questions so far? All we are trying to say is variations are quite often predictable, rules can be written about them, rules can be written in more than one way. You can write them in words. You can say ra is deleted at the end of the word. You can write using symbols, algorithmic symbols, slash ra, slash arrow going right, slash zero, slash then you describe the context using symbols. No matter how you do, the context can be captured and predicted. In underlying all this is a very simple truth of God that no matter how big, no matter how small, there are patterns, there are structural patterns. And if you want to do something with this body of knowledge, you can. Okay? Now, I want you to write a rule. Look at the behavior of sir. You know, sir becomes somewhere z, somewhere sir. Okay? Can you write a rule to predict where it remains and where it becomes z flat one minute, 60 seconds. I will start counting time, please. Write a rule in any convention, either this way or this way. I do not mind. This is again English standard variety of English, in a standard variety of English, you know this happens. Okay. Anybody from this side, please? You can discuss among yourselves, no problem. Okay. Anyone who would like to write? Anybody please? No? Look.
Look at the behavior of s. Where does it become z? After a voice sound. Simple. Then why don't you say that? Not just consonant. After a vowel also, which is voiced. Say, for example, you have boys. So becomes z after a voiced sound, whether consonant or vowel. Please write. Write that rule here. Yeah. In the same manner, sa goes to za after. In this case, it is before, make it after. Would one of you please come to the board and write? We have very little time now. Okay, the, you know it's pretty simple, a straightforward rule. So becomes z at the uh, following a voiced sound. Similarly, look at the behavior. All of these patterns are predictable. Look at this thing in English. Past tense in English is realized at t as d as id. I have not given you id. It is id following t and d. You can say wanted. You can say mended. Okay, but when it follows a voiceless consonant, then it is realized as t. Sorry, when it is preceded by a, a, a voiceless consonant, then it is realized as t. So, you have asked, but you have moved. Okay, the same rule can be written, you know, that da becomes t or ta becomes d, etcetera, etcetera. Okay? Can you look at this data, these data? A little bit of challenge. Do you have a class now or can I take it? Okay. Do you have a class now? Okay. What I am going to do is look at these three slides. One, two, three. No, no, no. This is the second. I have given you solutions. Do not look, look at the, I will mail these slides to Mahesh. Do not look at the solutions until you have done your own rule writing. Okay? So, 1, 2, I am giving you two sets of data and their solutions, their rules. Please, can I have your attention for 10 seconds before you leave? Can I have all of you for another 10 seconds? Two sets of data, I have also given you rules, I have also given you derivations. Do not look at derivations and rules until you have done your own rule writing. Then compare, this will train you into rule writing at the examination. At later, you will be able to observe patterns in others speech and you will learn much more that way than from no matter how long a lecture I give you. Thank you. Have a good day.